What's up, Final Fans? It's the Warrior of Hype. And about a month ago, I asked you for suggestions on our next videos. And instead of making separate videos for each one of your suggestions, I'm just going to do rapid fire. So, to start off, I'd like to start with... I'm going to do all of them, okay? So, Mawad was the first one to comment, and that is how Joshua, being the dominant of Phoenix, can affect Clive's revenge quest because there's a contradiction between wanting to avenge the death of someone and this someone being historically known to have the ability to resurrect dead people. That being Phoenix, of course, uh, you know, we all know what Phoenix is known for, rebirth. Um, all right, so there's, of course... The fact that Joshua is his brother, so witnessing the death of Joshua is definitely motive for revenge. But also, Clive witnesses his father decapitated. His family name is almost completely obliterated. He is the last living Rosfeld. So, we are also assuming that Ifrit awakens within Clive and not in control of the icon that kills Phoenix, which is Joshua. Let that sink in. If that is the case, then that means jo or, uh, that means Clive harbors his brother's murderer within himself. That's a cruel, cruel thing to live with. Uh, and it would definitely, you know, be motive for uh, seeking revenge for the rest of his life, you know. It, it, I'll kill you. If it's the last thing I do. That's what he says in the Awakening trailer. But uh, anyways, yeah, I mean, like, Phoenix may have died. So let's just throw that out there. Phoenix may have died in the beginning of that. In the game, I'm thinking it's at the beginning when the Great Tragedy happens, when uh, they're invaded, uh, Rosaria falls, and Ifrit rips off the wings and, we're assuming, kills Phoenix. But... Like I said, we all know what Phoenix is capable of, rebirth. And I'm thinking that we might see Phoenix come back and Joshua... I don't know if Joshua will come back. I think the Phoenix icon may rise again and we'll see a, a final clash between Ifrit and Phoenix. Just like we see in the, uh, the Yoshitaka Amano art. Which is, you know, it's known for giving away, not giving away, but teasing big story elements. So that would really kind of, one more final clash between Phoenix and Ifrit. Uh, and yeah, I mean, plus two icons of fire seems to be a major plot point for the story since two, two of the same element is unheard of. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, there, it's a very, very interesting suggestion that you got, uh, about, well, I mean, you're seeking revenge for something that is known to just come back to life anyway, but I think Joshua may be dead. Phoenix may come back, but I think Joshua might be dead. I don't know. We'll see. Jo it's, it's very interesting, uh, thing to suggest there. So thank you for that one. Now, the next one is, uh, Bolas Gamer says storylines or topics you'd like to see in the game especially since it's going to be so dark now we know that the real world commentary on weapons of mass destruction you got icons you have oil fields which are the mother crystals and the depleting resources of our world which being the blight depleting a lot of the resources now all of these topics are certainly going to make for a compelling mature story but I'd also like to add uh, that Yoshi P said there's moral gray areas. So no character is uh, pure evil. No character is pure good. Uh, I'm reminded of the storytelling of The Last of Us, which makes you feel empathetic for human adversaries, but also believe in the reasoning of the main characters. So it's that, it's that inner conflict that can sometimes make for just really, really interesting stories that I think Final Fantasy 16 will go into, and I'm, I'm, I'm actually kind of excited about that. So this being a mature and, like you said, uh, a dark story, I think we might get into those moral gray areas between like what is right, what is wrong, um, and things like that. So I'm, I'm all about that. <clears throat> now. Um, I guess I, I guess I'm just at this point in my life where this is exactly what I want. You know, I want something that I can resonate with uh, as you know an adult, 
as a 30 plus year old, you know, I've been through a lot in my life, <laughs> but, uh, you know, the world is the world with world news can be terrifying, you know, local news can be terrifying. Um, so I don't know, man. I just, I wanted to show the, the flaws of the world. I want to show that ugliness of people in the world. And, um, but most importantly that, you know, hope and faith, is, can prevail, right? And we know that, you know, these are two key elements that Yoshi P have, has, in fact, talked about, that even through it all, you will find hope at the end of this game. And I'm kind of, you know, I think that's what excites me a lot. You know, like, we're going to get into the gritty. We're going to get into that, that, that dark, right? It's going to get to some dark places. It's going to be a very emotional story. Uh, but... It's all about finding hope at the end of it. And yeah, that's what that's what excites me about that. I mean, because, you know, the world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very mean and nasty place. And I don't care how tough you are, it'll beat you to your knees if you if you keep it there, it'll probably let it. Alright, sorry, you know the whole Rocky Balboa quote, but it ain't about how hard you can hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. Right. That's how winning is done. I'm telling you, that, that is going to be the perfect uh, way to explain that, uh, uh, my, my thoughts on this, on this suggestion. <laughs> Just that Rocky Balboa quote. Um, all right, so Papas Fridas is next. Papas Fridas says, I'm interested on how the battle system would be like under Ryota Suzuki's direction. Now, I've made videos on this, uh, on the combat at this point, uh, and I hope you have enjoyed those. But I will say that bringing Ryota Suzuki in for Final Fantasy 16 was a logical choice for evolving the series, in my opinion. Final Fantasy 15 was really the first to change up the formula. Uh, so for me, this whole conversation is uh, that that not not Papa's Frida is bringing this in, but like I hear that you know a lot of people like, oh man, they've taken this action-oriented direction. I'm like, man, Final Fantasy 15's kind of kind of kind of kickstarted that. Uh, so bringing in the best of the best in the action genre just seemed like the next level, you know, for Final Fantasy. Like, go out and get the best. So I'm excited for that. I am. I'm also with you. I'm excited for what the battle system is going to be like. And we've seen a lot of it and I've covered a lot of it in my videos. So uh, moving on to... Uh, I think we got uh, Ballas Gamer with another question, and we're going to answer it. Uh, Storylines or topics you'd like to see... Uh, oh, wait. Sorry, I already, I already got that one. Within Japan, uh, they name characters with a, uh, with a specific reason. Their names have meaning, and that would be true to characters in Final Fantasy XVI. Their names could possibly tell how they are and what could happen to them. Now that is a that's a good that's a good question. It's a good suggestion, I should say. Um, and I did reply to that with basically saying, "Great idea." I was planning a, um, you know, I was planning a character bio series, kind of like a everything we know about type thing. Uh, but I know that Clive is named after a cliff, and uh, that pairs well because Rosaria looks to be situated on a cliff. So. That's my deep analysis of that. I'm just kidding. I got a whole lot more to say about it. But again, I'll get into it. We can even talk about Joshua and the many biblical ties. And one of which involves man trying to defy the gods. And uh, that seems to be a common theme that I keep stumbling upon for Final Fantasy 16 breakdowns. Of course, the literal Japanese translation by Turquoise Hammer of the Ambition trailer said, Quote, 1500 years have passed since man fought God and ever since the realm of Valisthea has been dying as punishment. End quote. So, uh, yeah. I'll go into more uh, detail like that for each and every character in the upcoming series. Please be excited. You know? Alright, so we got Nicholas Nezero. Nicholas Nezero says... Trying to make sense of how the icon system works in general. How come Clive can steal icons from others? Speculate how he got Phoenix from Joshua, among other things. Hmm. 
This is speculation indeed, but I think Clive is the prophesied master of the heavenly servants that will herald the hand of God incarnate, so that the world can be reborn. These heavenly servants will flock to their master, Clive, who will harbor the, each of the eight icons within himself. And I theorize that Ifrit is just the first evolution that will become chaos, or Diabolus, once all the icons are obtained. Now you can watch my chaos theory video for more on that. Uh, this will also answer happy freeze and wrecked players TV suggestions about the unknown icon and what my thoughts are. There's happy free and then wrecked TV with a like, talking about the unknown unknown icon. So hopefully that answers your questions. Now let's go on to. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Um, your predictions on the critic and user scores uh, for this game and what it might get, how the public might receive it, and your hopes for it in Final Fantasy 16. Thank you, Alexina, for that one. I kind of did talk about that in the previous video about will it be successful, uh, the marketing that it needs to do to be successful, in my opinion, taking a lot of notes from Final Fantasy 15. So if you haven't seen that one, go check it out. Um, now, on critic and user scores, I'm going to make a separate video on that after the news drop in April, so that way I can kind of get a good sense, you know? I can get a better sense of how that game is going to be, because we're going to be talking about the RPG aspects of it, and, uh, you know, exploration, side quests, and all that other stuff. The, you know, the calmer parts of it. We've seen a lot of the combat and, and the story, but we'll get, a, get to know a lot of the, the world, you know? in the next info drop. So once we get that, then I'll make my user and uh, critic scores. All right, my predictions for that. Now, uh, I don't do 4chan links, so I already commented on that one. Uh, immune to rug burn was understandable about that. When it comes to 4chan leaks or any kind of leaks about the story, I don't I don't mess with that. I don't like I don't like that even giving me the idea that it could be. I like to have the fun theorizing and speculation on my own. I don't even really watch that many other content creators uh, and their theories just because I like to come up with my own stuff. Um, but yeah, so yeah, when it comes to th story theories, so when it comes to story theories. Now, uh, D. Murray says what that sinkhole is below the Dominion. Um, and this is I think, talking about that whirlpool or that sinkhole that's right, like it's south of the Dominion. Yeah, maybe the forebearers are hiding under there. That's a good suggestion. I have two theories on that. Here they are without much explanation. <laughs> One, it could be where the airship is hidden. Yoshi P said, yeah, we might have an Enterprise. You can just assume that we have an Enterprise in this game. So yeah, airships somewhat confirmed. Uh, but yeah, so I think it'll be like a sort of a Final Fantasy X reveal, except for instead of being underground, it'll be under the water and, you know, it'll clear away and out comes the the big airship and you you'll take it to the take it to the skies your heaven's word if you know what i'm saying and then up there we'll get the uh the fallen the civilization of the fallen yeah and i do believe the airship will be ancient technology of the of the fallen and maybe they put it there or maybe it fell there or maybe a uh, mother crystal fell from the sky and and when it fell from the sky it just boom made a big old sinkhole and that leads me to number two, my my second. Oh man, I said number two. Whoops. Uh, <laughs> that leads me to my uh, my second uh, suggestion, is that it leads to the core of the planet, where the Drake's heart, Mother Crystal, is the heart of it all. Clive and company will destroy that, and they destroy the god of this game and the fate that is written. Yeah, Drake's heart, Mother Crystal. It's it's got to be. You know, it's. It's got Final Fantasy kind of thing, you know, like at the heart, it's the heart of everything, get rid of it, you fight a god, yeah. But anyways, uh, I have no idea, but I do believe it is connected to the ancient uh, civilization, the Fallen, so yeah. Now, Emily, Emily says, theories about Sambrek and their one true deity. This is a good one. Uh, this would make for a fantastic standalone video, but I'll need to give it a little bit more thought. 
Uh, for now, I think uh, it has strong ties to what is written in the book that I was talking about earlier, in case you didn't catch on when I was talking about the, the, the savior myths and the master of the heavenly servants. Uh, these are called, uh, this is under the savior myths of Valisthea. I decrypted that book. Again, I keep plugging my own videos, but hopefully you, you guys have been following along with us and subscribed. Thank you. Uh, and you've already seen that video. Uh, that's what I'm referring to here. So the people of Sambrek believe that the emperor is the living incarnation of, of the god. So maybe they believe that uh, he will fulfill that prophecy of remaking the world. Maybe they see this as a spiritual rebirth of the world rather than a destructive one. And they're all behind that. They, they worship that. Um, and they think that, you know, he's the uh, prophesized, you know, hand of God incarnate. So, yeah, I mean, that's what I that's what I think about that. Now, um, Daryl Bailey says the idea of fighting over dwindled resources in a dying world rather than banding together to survive. What could have happened in the nation's past to warrant a new conflict? Now, we know that these um, these these nations or realms have been at war. They've been at each other's throats or at least it's been like a, a cold war, right? Like tensions are very high. I think it's been talked about how these icons exist, but no one's ever really used them. Again, the commentary on the, the weapons of mass destruction where it's like they're there. Tensions are high, um, but they don't use them. Uh, and then all of a sudden, here comes the blight. And here comes dwindling resources. Here comes their mother crystal, the source of their power. And that is fading out. So now we have these nations on the brink of not only all-out war, but on the brink of just complete extinction, right? So that causes uh, chaos. Um, and I think that's what's going on here. And then, of course, you have from the continent of Ash... You have Barnabas rising up, apparently, and nobody, nobody know who the, knows who this guy. No royal name, no royal lineage, and anything like that. It just rises up as the dominant of Odin and just conquers that entire continent. And uh, yeah, and he's all about war, according to his character descriptions. So he, I mean, whoo. Uh, so yeah, I like, I like to bring it back. I talked about this in the podcast, but I'll talk about it here where, uh, Yoshi P mentioned, uh, the dark Knight, the Batman movie, the dark Knight was one of the main sources of inspiration. His, it's his favorite movie of all time. So I like to quote the Joker here, quote, you see their morals, their code. It's a bad joke dropped at the first sign of trouble. They're only as good as the world allows them to be. I'll show you. When the, trip, when the chips are down, these civilized people, they'll eat each other. See, I'm not the monster. I'm just ahead of the curve. End quote. Ah, man. God, it's such a good movie. So many good quotes. But yeah, there, there you go. Once chaos ensues, once you put these, you put civilized people, good people, and you put their backs to the wall... How, how do they act then? You know, So that's kind of the moral gray areas we're talking about. Very excited to see that. Now, East Blue Drew says different enemy types that you'll encounter. Now, this sounds like a fun video. Again, I'm, I might make a separate video on this because it just seems fun to do and analyze every bit of information, compile all the known information, uh, and just kind of put together a enemy type video. But I will say that there's four different types of enemies that I've seen so far, or maybe I'm missing some. Comment, let me know. But like humans, monsters, the fallen, and basically the icons, like the dominance and the icons. So Stephen Davis says, what the hell is up with Leviathan? You know? So I had theorized in my, oh my God. I keep on like, I feel, well, like, here's the thing, right? This I asked this question a month ago. I've made a lot of videos, um, so I've kind of answered them somewhat in, in other videos. I keep plugging my own video. I'm so sorry. Do you know what you should do? You should just subscribe and watch from uh, all of the Final Fantasy 16 playlists. That's I should have made this video just me saying, hey, 
watch my stuff, I guess. No, I mean, this is it's just a really wild, fun uh, speculation video. It's about Hinduism inspirations, uh, and I, I, I talked about how I think that Leviathan could be the first icon who helped reshape the world after the fall of the forebears known as the Fallen. Uh, and then that has a wild theory, so I can definitely dig in deeper uh, to Leviathan once we know something about Le the Leviathan and the D and the Dominant. Uh, but of course, that may even be held a secret all the way up until the the game releases. And I'll tell you why I think that. Uh, to answer this question a little bit better, um, I think Leviathan is the first of the Dominants, and I think, or first of the Icons, and I think. The dominant is an old man because Yoshi P tells Gamatsu, quote, my favorite character is a character we haven't introduced yet. So I can't tell you too much about them, but I can tell you that it is an older character in the game, not very young. We talked about before how the game is this very dark feel, but this character is very, very lovable, kind of a comedic in a sense. And that's why I love him, because he brings that light to the darkness and quote, think he's going to be uh like yoda from star wars i think he's going to have so much information to give you kind of quirky um and fun but it's that wise uh the wise old man or the uh you know that story trope that where you have the mentor basically that's going to reveal so much about the hero's journey you know like if you ever if you know about the uh, hero's journey it's that it's that uh character that's going to kind of give fill them in on everything that's happening right uh so yeah i think it's going to be kind of like the yoda this person's going to be kind of like the yoda uh and yeah and basically reveal the purpose the true purpose of the dominance basic maybe even tell what the fate of of the dominance are um and what the icons really are so I think Leviathan is very, very important. And Stephen Davis says that Leviathan is a uh, favorite icon. Favorite icon summon. So I think it's going to have a part to play in the game for sure. Uh, let's see. I feel the Iron Islands dominance, they slaughter... Uh, the dominant that they slaughter is connected to the Leviathan. Hmm. So Leviathan is from the Iron Islands type thing. And they just slaughtered that dominant. Ooh, that's good. Because they have talked about sometimes dominants are just killed at birth. Like, or killed at the sign of their awakening. Like, they don't they don't tolerate that. That's good. It's good. Leviathan could be uh, held back from being able to return because of the Iron um Iron Kingdom, the Iron Islands, it isn't, <laughs> I feel like that's Game of Thrones, right? I feel like, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ironborn. Uh, what is dead may never die. Uh, Leviathan. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, so there you go, man. I've answered everybody's uh, questions on this post. And thank you so much for commenting on it. And let me know what you want me to talk about in Final Fantasy 16 videos. Now, if you have more suggestions and you kind of like what I'm doing here, this is... This is a different style than what I'm I'm used to doing. Like I usually do some heavy editing, but if you like this, me just sitting down, reading your comments and answering them in a video for like you know just directly to you, no editing involved. So you hear me say ah uh, and mm, and repeat myself a couple times. <laughs> uh, there you go. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you know, please share, subscribe. Uh, you know ring the bell of timely notifications uh and yeah we're 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 gunning for that uh early review code we're um you know we have a mission here so please help us out really appreciate it thank you so much for watching take care now bye bye then